Wheels are turning. Wheels are They're turning. On. We are live. We, wheels are on the ground. That's right. Woo! We're rolling. Uh, welcome. Everybody is tuning in. We got several people already here waiting. Uh, we've been trying to get together with Vin over at No Nonsense Whiskey. Great. We were finally able to. I think the wife and kids were out of town. So Vin said, hey, I got a free Sunday. He what said, are you guys doing? Party with the dummies. That's right. <laughs> uh, Vin, go ahead and introduce yourself to those uh, tuning in that don't know you. Hi, everyone. Yeah, Vin at No Nonsense Whiskey here. Uh, yeah, like, as Scott said, I've been trying to get on um, to Scotch Test Dummies for a while now, but Sunday is always bad for me. It's always family day, you know, so it's, uh, like I said, the wife's out of town, so I'm straight on it, straight onto the dummies. Yeah, I can do this day. Let's go. All um, right. And we were looking at kind of what we have around, what Vin has around. We have several Douglas Lang offerings. Yeah. Vin has several samples of Douglas Lang Love offerings. Love the Lang. So we said, uh, let's take a look at Douglas Lang. And we have, I mean, we've, we've done some individual reviews of Douglas Lang. All right. So what are we um, going to do with the Lang? What are we going to do? We're going to test it. Yes. <laughs> Live test it. <laughs> so let's just start with the base Ooh. offerings, though, that we have the. Um, what do you want? Oh, Epicurean. One of my well, favorites, which, which really stunned you when I fell in love with it. We've got the Epicurean. We've got the Big P. Right. We've got the Christmas edition Big Pete from 2016, I think. Yeah, maybe. the cast strength. I expected more out of that than it gave. Uh, one of our Patreon supporters arranged for us to get a double barrel of Douglas Langs. That is a, a Bamore and a Craig Ellicke, bottled at 46%. He just likes saying Craig Ellicke. Great, it's great, great Craig Gellickies. Somebody's mad at you for doing that accent. And then also I have uh, two old particulars from Douglas Lang that we haven't reviewed yet. A Glenn Goyne 20 year and a Blair, not Athel, Athel. Thank you. I just like if you're an old particular, it sounds like you'd be yelling, get off my lawn. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So we, I wanted to start with, though, just the Epicurean. Oh, good it's, start. It's been a while. Now, I got to tell you, of, of their base offerings, you've oh. got Timorous Beastie. Right. Scallywag, which is the little dog. Tim, no, Tim. Well, Timorous Beastie is the mouse. That's right. Scally, okay, Scallywag has the dog. I was trying to flow. Rock oyster, right? No, I don't know what's on that cover. Oysters? I think it's a lighthouse. It's a lighthouse. Makes sense. Is that right? Is it a lighthouse? Somebody uh, put it in the comments. Yeah. Somewhere. And then the could be um, an old pirate and Big Pete. Yeah, which is a, a a big man with a beard getting hit. And the Epicurean. <laughs> the, of those five, when we tested them, the Epicurean was my least favorite. Oh, and but I you loved, loved it. it. Loved it. So I wanted to revisit it and see. Yeah, this is the second bottle I've purchased here. And they've and I'm on the hunt. I'm on the I've got an eye peeled for the Epicurean cash strength. And you've got, I know you're not gonna gonna hit it today, but <laughs> I you might open it. I might open it. I'll, I'll run through quickly what I've got. The mine are all uh, little sample sizes that I've been picking up through my uh, my subscription. I know, um, I'm not sure if you guys get stuff like this in the US, but um, I, I pay for a subscription every month and I get these come through every month. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, but I've got the Epicurean, the Rock Oyster, the Scallywag Standard, the Scallywag Cask Strength number two. Uh, I've got three old particulars. That's the... Invergordon 21, the Cambridge 25, and the Fetacan 20, and two Provenance, which is the Milton Duff 7 and the Talisker 7. So we've got, we got some stuff to get through. We've got some stuff to get through. Beautiful. Now, uh, also, before we get going, we are going to try to keep this right at one hour. Right. Roy Octave Vite is at the Phage Isle mm. Festival, Festival of Isla, Isla Festival. You keep talking like that, we're going to run long. Fasheel, I think they say, or something like that. Fasheel. 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 Uh, Roy's got permission at 10 o'clock to go live from the Isla house. Wow. I'm not sure what that entails or where that's at. But when we're done, we'll try to keep this right at an hour. Go over to Aqua Vitae's channel and tune in right from yeah. Fasheel. So we'll, we'll keep her rolling. So you uh, want to go right into the Epicurean. It's a lowland. What's it? What's it? it is the blend of the lowlands. 46.2%. Right. Beautiful. Very light. So let's just, okay, so to back up a little bit, where we were at, Johnny Walker's, mm. everybody knows Johnny Walker's a blend. Right. A lot of people get started into scotch with Johnny Walker Black. Sure. 
we had faded away from blends for quite a while and mm -hmm. found compass box. Sure. Right. We were compass box early fanboys. Yeah. And a great introduction again to blends and how well they can be done. It can be masterful. Until we did Douglas Lang, I probably thought, and Compass Box is still really good and probably my favorite, but I didn't know if they had a competitor. And I think Douglas Lang may be that competitor to Compass Box. What do you think? I always thought of Douglas Lang as like the, rather than a competitor, they're the guys that follow the rules and Compass Box are the guys that break the rules mm -hmm. as much as they can, you know. There you go. Yeah, I, I think that follows too. What I will, what I like with Douglas Lang is they went for regions, so they wanted right. to create blends from regional areas, which is everything we've just talked about, which is really neat, and it brings its own little cachet, I think, to it. Mm -hmm. True. Um, so now, particularly on the Epicurean, what are your thoughts? We'll we'll do your thoughts. I'll go last. Each right on the nose, just a blast of assault. And I remember I got like this mezcal or tequila cactus almost nose. It's still there. Yeah, tanginess. Lime, kind of a lime tequila salt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a like salty, like fl almost floral, like kind of a bit grassy. Yeah, I get that grassy maltiness. Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of age they put into this thing, but it's, um, I don't know, it's, it doesn't seem that old to me. Right. I totally get that mezcal tanginess. And then I get a little bit of like a, like a, a pie dough, that maltiness with a with a, a raw pie dough that hasn't been baked yet. Kind of like a, almost a custard as well under there. Mm. Well, I, just, I can't get past the salt and the cactus. Yeah. I get a little bit of lemon custard deeper in, which... I love. There's some vanilla. Yeah, and the maltiness. Hmm. Oddly with it, I think the um, kind of palate is a bit is a bit better um, than the nose, which is something that I don't find very often. Um, usually, the nose is all is all everything. Like the uh, the, the Tomatin Legacy, or um, it's called du uh, Dualcus for you, isn't it? A amazing nose, terrible palate. <laughs> <laughs> But this is um, this is kind of got like a mustiness to it that I don't really like. But then it's quite sweet and a little spicy, a little little zingy on the tongue. There's the palate. The palate is a lot different than the nose. the The cactus isn't there. That mezcalish um, isn't there. It's more vanilla cream pie. Yes. Uh, lemon meringue 100%. custard. Hundred percent. Mm. A little bit of um, kind of white pepper, I think, as well. That's what I always get from this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's the spiciness that I get as well. Kind of a real clean, crisp white pepper with all those custards and vanillas. It's a little sparky, which is what I think interests me or what sh strikes me as unique, yet still light and and uh, and kind of almost fluffy a little bit. Okay, I'm digging the palate. It's nice. It's good. I don't know if it would beat the Scallywag though. Scallywag has been my favorite. Of course, you, that's the space I sherry. Yeah, no, yeah, no. No. Okay. no, the four actually the four the four original bottles that we got was from the distributor and right. they gave us kind of their their right. tasting First, bottles to review. Uh, yeah. I remember that. What's the percent on this thing? 46.2. That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like that. I, I mean, generally speaking, with Douglas Lang, I like what they do anyway because everything's. Um, I mean, they're, they're not complete parity, not like uh, like Compass Box. You can email them and find out what what they're doing, but they don't really hold anything back either. They're they're willing to tell their story, less nonsense if you like, which is something that I obviously go for. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thanks to everybody that's tuning in. I want to point out, let's go through just a few people that are here. Phil Dwyer is tuning in. He's not too far from you, Ben. Uh, Harry Wally, James Jang, Tom R., Eric Waite, Sirachi Ace, Food Quig, Connor Strang, My Bourbon Journey, D.H. Silv 2, who's responsible for naming Make America Pita again. Thank you. Uh, Jason Whiskey Wise, he's not too far from you also, Vin. Carl Van Volgum is here. 
Jason Whiskey Wise, I said. Welsh Toro, Ben Marnock. Thanks for uh, do, 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 and I'm sure bourbon shenanigans. A little bit ago, bur bourbon shenanigans asked what's a good bourbon to go with a sunburn. Ooh. I don't think you'd want, don't rub a cask strength on there. I think that would burn. I don't know if I'd rub it. It's more like consoling yourself with the burn. Ah. Yeah. But um, someone just asked, or they're guessing there might be a good bit of Akintoshin in this. And so sometimes the Epicurean does list. You mean Douglas Lang list? What I say, Douglas. Epicure. Oh, d sometimes Douglas Lang does list yeah, what, what distilleries they're using. So I was going to look to see. They don't. They don't say? I don't think so. Not at least on the label. No, Maybe they I'm don't. Wrong. I don't see any. No, I don't think they do for this one. Um, I think it might be the Timorous Beastie that they list a little bit for. I can't remember. Maybe the Rock Oyster as well. They say a couple of them. Yeah, uh, and Big Big Pete does as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's pretty easy to guess the Big Pete because um, some of the Isla distilleries don't like to right. give away their stuff, and some do. <laughs> and Lowlands as well. It's not too hard to guess as well because there's not that many, but it's the space side that's really the challenge, I think. Okay, I just got some more of the, the salt that's on the nose. I just got on the palate. Mm. Some more of that kind of sour maltiness. So are you warming? I was, but I'm now I'm back. Now you're to, back. Yeah. The saltiness pushed you away again. The saltiness is kind of a sour. Really? So I think it's like a saucy lover. <laughs> you know, you want a little bit more, and then you're getting a little salt. You get a little slap in the face, back you off again. Hmm. No, you don't go on the too much. No, I was looking at comments, or I was letting you. I was letting you go. <laughs> on it, you know. I figured I went too far there. He's like, ain't no, ain't no saucy lover. I was gonna uh, just shout out real quick. John Pallister is tuning in. I haven't seen John before. Thanks for tuning in. Hmm. Jez Body is here. Connor Strang. If I didn't mention him earlier, and if you did, you got a double. That's right. <laughs> So keeping her moving, what do you want to do? Big Pete? You want to do a direct comparison? Yeah, no, I hate, I'm not going to go. If you want to go Pete, go ahead. I think we've got some other stuff to look at. Well, I think if we do it, it would do it a little bit toward the end. The Pete's going to yeah. be rather strong. True. I am I'm curious. Surprised you guys aren't Peted out at the moment. You guys have been hammering the Pete big time. We have, <laughs> yes. I do love the Pete, but I'm with you. We're a bit Peted out. Do you want me to bring forth the double barrel? Yeah, let's look at let's take a look at that double barrel. Right. Now we did have one of our Patreon supporters said, "Hey, not everybody loves Pete." Right. Yeah, uh, he was, that is yeah. true. He yeah. wanted to know. He said, he was about Pete it out. It's funny because um, when I started watching you guys just before I started my channel, something like two years ago, uh, I remember saying at the start that um, kind of Bart was all well into his Pete and nothing else. Scott was the opposite, and I was like, "Yeah, I can entirely agree." Basically, whenever Bart says he likes something, I'm not buying that. <laughs> um, and when I started the channel, I couldn't do that anymore. I had to sign up. I had to learn how to like Pete. And it's the, the best thing. If you haven't seen the, the the shows that they've done, by the way, the best thing about it is that they've picked the, the same ones all the way through. Yeah. And and even if you didn't realize that you had at one point, you had, you had to look, add little subtitles. But I can't believe that it's it's gone that way. Considering you were Scott, you were just like me at the start, and now you're like, yeah, this is awesome. I like I like what he likes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? I mean, yeah. That stunned us. I, I, I still prefer sherried scotches, though. Mm -hmm. What was magical, though, was that at least in those groupings, we were, I, I believe it showed a little bit of us being able to pick at least what the quality had been. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't want to say quality, because sometimes there's some, there's some different flavors. I may want creosote one day in a uh, peated English whiskey company. And then another day I'm like, ah, I don't really want the creosote. I want something more tobacco-ish. So I don't want to necessarily say quality, but uh, standing toe to toe against each other, I think we solidly picked out some good quality notes. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Which, uh, which one have you poured now? I missed that. The double barrel. Ooh, I don't have that. What I poured now is the, is the rock oyster. That's a good it's one. I was interested to see if that was um, salty, like the the last one. So I'm not sure if you've tried that one yet, Scott. The um, the rock oyster. We we don't have that one here. We've done that one. It's been a while since we reviewed that one. I liked it. It was a good one. Right. Well, we have with the double barrels. It's a, a marriage of a, a Bowmore and a Craig Gallicky. and uh, and it's written in gold here, so it's hard to pick out. But uh, 
Um, they basically, they've married them together from just one single selected cask each. And then it goes into some marketing on there. Well, I think, yeah, they are. The thing with the, with the a Douglas double Lang single. double barrel, right. they are, it's two whiskeys. They're both a single barrel whiskey. So mm -hmm. they've taken a single barrel Bamor mm -hmm. and a single barrel Craig Gellicky and combined them. That does sound pretty amazing to be fair. Now, I will say, and this bared out in our peach shootouts as well, I'm not as big a fan, and this is just my palate, of the Bomore. And some of that comes through even a little bit here. We got a cowbell moment. Yeah, we got a cowbell. I was going to let you finish. Oh, sorry, Are you done? Go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> Woo! Dustin Silvestri, $10 uh, super chat. Thank you, Dustin. He says, a, a Merry Sherry Christmas Die mm. Hard theme. You betcha. That'll be great. Yippee ki yay, mm, you mother. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> well avoided. Well avoided. Yes. Also, next time you have a chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. Right. It's good advice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> also from the movie Die right. I'm not telling anyone out there to... Spoiler alert. Kill anyone. Oh, I thought you were without worried hesitation. maybe somebody hadn't seen it. <laughs> Oh, hey. Eric, wait, the sniper. Oh, the sniper's in. There's a flood now. <laughs> the sniper's good. He'll have a comment any second now. It'll just but be just. It's right deep. below it. It's not tagged oh. to the super chat, but he says, Bart, you're like Peter Paul's Almond Joy and Mounds. Bam. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. See, there's the sniper. That's it right there. <laughs> one shot, one kill. <laughs> He's in. Uh, Vin, where is your palate laying? What I like to say, you know, what's your favorite genre of whiskey? Oh, it's a difficult one because I've been, um, I've, since I started doing what I do, it, it's uh, it's changed so much. You know, um, I used to be into the sherry, but as you guys are well aware, I've had this problem with sulfur that's kind of killing me a little bit. Um, Pete is really, I'm loving that at the moment. And bourbon as well. I, I literally drank my first bourbon like episode three on my channel and it was the buffalo trace standard mm. and i was like hey this doesn't taste like jack daniels so that's the only other thing i've tried uh and now i'm, I'm like really loving bourbon at the moment i'm really loving isla whiskies at the moment um and sorry to all the scotch drinkers out there but i'm really loving world whiskies and i'm really loving what people are doing when they're not confined to the swa rules um stuff like french whiskey is really good at the moment um a lot of european stuff not too much of a fan of over in uh, eight, in like kind of Taiwan, I don't really like Kavalan that much, but Indian whiskey, the good stuff, I'm really liking that as well. Ding ding, very cool. No, what you're talking about exactly what we love is, is uh, you know, sampling in and trying everything. You can really see a lot of those differences as they come through. So, um, and there's some great um, Jack Daniel stuff that what we call the double barrel, which is the uh, Single, single barrel, barrel barrel proof oh unbelievable if you get a chance mm. and then something else i think you, you guys don't get much of over there is um supermarkets releasing their own branded stuff right so, like, we've got one called aldi i think you guys have got aldi a little bit that german supermarket cheap stuff yes right. so, like they, they release things like this they've got their own little fake distillery called glenn Marnock, and they don't tell anybody what's in it but it's really really cheap and heavily colored but it costs me 17 pounds so it must be something like sort of 13 14 dollars you know sure. um and it's it's not half bad it's not you know it's, it's not great but it it's it suits me for a, a daily sipper and it's quite cheap so hmm. that's another thing i'm liking at the moment it's stuff that i can actually afford Ooh, more cowbell that was a tentative cowbell that was jesse great. Jesse Voison come the through voice it says for the Ardbeg grooves committee release sample Ooh, he's my peep brother <laughs> I told Jesse he can be my wingman anytime. <laughs> uh, you had mentioned you just brought up Bamore uh, a little bit ago, and the same. It for some reason it doesn't hit my palate real good. We snuck it in, or we put it in the first, or no, it was the second shootout, wasn't it? It was uh, the yeah. Pete Strikes Back. We I put think in so. the all kind Bamore. of I think the Bamore was in there. It was a twelve year. And just to see how it would do blind, and still it did not fare too well. Not too well. For either one of us. It's just not to our palate, I think. Yeah. 
I don't know why. And I, and I've heard that some people you either like it or you don't, or you love it or you don't. Yeah. yeah. So now I have one more. I've got a liter of the ten that's coming up on the channel soon. Obviously, oh. I, I only bought that last month. I've done some damage to that. That's, uh, good. that's just a ten year old. I got re really cheap from the airport. Um, took a punt on it because. Like you say, but more they, they I always find they they divide the field quite neatly. They're they're not for everybody, even peat drinkers. But if you like them, then you love it. I think. Hmm. I agree. Mm. But it's very tasty, very tasty. I, I used to like their uh, was it was it the fifteen year old that was um not dark and intense. Um, I've forgotten what they called it now. But it was uh, it, it was really really nice and rich and heavily sherried, but good sherry, not bad sherry. I think this is the kind of same sort of thing, but it's, I mean, that's been heavily colored that for a 10 year old whiskey. Look at it. It's beautiful. Right. Got a few shout outs here to new people that are tuning in. Jim Nelson. I haven't seen you before. The whiskey junkie Donner pass whiskey Donner, and Andy Hopton. And then oh, up several, in Colorado? Several new guys. Donner Pass. I don't know. I, I thought Could Donner be. Pass was up in uh, Colorado. Now, the, me if I'm wrong. The Whiskey Junkie points out, he says he may jump on the Lagavulin 12 year after seeing our championship. That's a good one. That's the 12 year 2017 edition. Right. Grab that while you can. It's a good, good edition. They come out with their limited edition by year, and the 17 was definitely better than the 16, in my opinion. Good enough that I bought two which I usually don't do. Every time they release those things, I'm always at the end of the month or my budget for the month has gone or whatever, and I always miss it every year. But I should just just go for it because it's always good, the 12 year. Even though some are better than others, they're always good. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you there. They don't miss the mark, just some are exceptional. <laughs> so, and that's the, that's the nice thing. Yeah. Woo! Hmm. So I'm going to pull my first old particular. Uh, something I've been keen to try for a while, actually. It's the uh, the Cameron Bridge 25, which, um, if you don't know, I'm sure everyone in the comments knows, but it's the same distillery that makes the fabled Hay Club. You get that over there, right? Yes. Yeah, so expensive, very young. It's okay. It's okay. The, the younger version is not okay, but the Hay Club itself isn't bad. So I'm interested to see how 25 years in a cask does to the same liquid. Hmm. Uh, Greg, Greg, Greg Gore is asking on Lagavulin, as a peat newbie, why is the eight year more expensive than older years? It should not be. Right. Uh, in our area, the it's, eight year is less. the cheapest. Yeah. And fact is, you can find it the eight year for $49 here now. And the 16 is probably next at uh, 90, 80 to 90. And then the limiteds are 120 ish. Yeah. Yeah. For a while there, they weren't sure, or it was unsure by the market if they were going to do another eight year, but now that's become a standard, I believe. Haven't they come out saying there's they're going to continue, or at least for the near future, continue yeah. with an eight? Yeah. Well, they, they were doing that for the 200th anniversary, right. and uh, I think it was such a yep, it was a big hit success. So I could see maybe if you have a liquor store that doesn't realize that that's not just a 200th, you know, loan anniversary bottle, they may not know. Uh, Tom R is pointing out our sexy water dropper setup. Yeah. We actually just got those in. That's our own. We had uh, with our logo made on them on the mini Glen Cairn. You can see, or the wee Glen Cairn, the dummy head logo, and then the wood stave as our logo burned in. It's a pretty nice set, actually, available on uh, scotchtestdummies.com. Yeah, kind of neat. <laughs> little sales pitch there. A little bit man. of merch. Uh, Sirachi Ace is tuning in. He got to try Ardbeg Groove's committee release and the non-committee release yesterday. Mm. Uh, what were your thoughts? What did you think, Sirachi? Yeah, how do they compare? We've had the committee release, but I'm curious. Mm. And I told Bart I was tired of eating crackers all the time, so I made up a little cheese tray and some hummus. Yeah, and he made a little bread. homemade hummus. A little homemaker. Uh, you, you didn't tell me in advance that you were going to have food, and I'm just staring at you two eating food, and it's just killing me. Oh, it's delicious, dude. That's, oh. That is that is one thing we <laughs> that's one thing we've learned with our live streams, right. especially if it's sitting here for an hour, up to an hour and a half drinking whiskey. It's best to have a little bit of munchies around. Yeah, usually I'm the one that comes out with all the specials. 
foods and stuff. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I throw them a bag of chips. Here's some yeah. crisps. Usually, if you've, <laughs> if you've ever tuned in to one of our shows, too, we've done like some uh, Glenfiddich cake. We had a Jim Beam cake that, well, that we was had. a fan, right? Didn't a fan? No, your wife bought one, but a fan sent us. We, Amy. Yeah. That's right. And then we've had some cheeses. Bart just chows down. Oh, you put it like in he, front of me. It's like he hasn't ate in four days. Well, I'm huge. I'm 6'6", six, six, like 240, so I've got to be fed continually. <laughs> <laughs> so like I'm a drink or something. Yeah. Yeah, you put food near me. That and in the family I grew up in, if you didn't get on the food, it was gone. So you had to move on it. Mm. Yeah, we call them grazers over here, just constantly grazing all day. Right. Uh, Daniel Willis was asking me if that was a recent Elmer T. Lee or an old one back there. I just picked that up maybe towards the end of 2017. Uh, found it on a shelf in a store, luckily. So, gotcha. Uh, Tom R. says he discovered pairing dried figs with scotch. It's just mm. wonderful. Now, I actually have I have some some uh, fig um, spread yeah. for some of the cheeses that are out, but. Right. Um, Bart is pouring Glenn the old Goyne. particular Glen Goyne. It's yes. a 20 year ex bourbon cask, right? 51 and a half percent. I'll just cut. Well, I'll wait. I'll, if, if if we move into both of them, the, the Blair Athol and the Glen Goyne, how do you say that? Blair, well, I say Blair Athol. Is that you, correct? You frown at me every time I say well, that. Well, I'm just not sure you've got it down. <laughs> It's like the planet Uranus. Is yeah. it Uranus or is it Uranus? <laughs> I mean, what is it? Uh, I'm enjoying this um, Cameron Bridge 25. It's um, it's a grain, obviously. Uh, I just did the uh, the Strathclyde as well. That's that's just the case. I, I emptied that, but um, I don't know if you guys caught the stream where I did with Roy about adding water to whiskey, mm. and it's like. Grain, um, over 20 years in a car, something amazing happens. But if you add a little bit of water to it as well, it's just incredible. All these flavors come out, and it, it's definitely worth it. And they're, quite, they're so cheap as well, grains, single grains, because they're not as popular. Right. You get a 25-year-old for less than 50 quid. So mm. I don't know, what's that, like $39, I think I spent on the Strathclyde 25-year. Wow. All yeah. right. And it's, it, that, that didn't last very long, I must admit. It was too good, too good. I was showing some leg there. <laughs> Keep it going. Now, Eric Waite was commenting a little bit ago, too. He had one of the old particulars. I think he said it was a 20-year-old Highland Park that he really liked as well. This is interesting. Mm. Wow. A lot of honeys. Light citrus, sugars. Green puff. You get a little ginger? Mm -hmm. Trying to see. I just had a little bit Maybe. of the hummus. Make sure I didn't mess with the palate. Hmm. Yeah. Malty. Little spice. Little allspice. Hmm. I think you get a little ginger on the nose. Uh, Eric Wade is asking, Vin, did you say Cameron Bridge? Yeah, Cameron Bridge, yeah. I don't know if, you, if anybody will have to see that on my camera, but um, yeah. It's the, I, I get these little samples. Eric knows about these, but um, yeah, the Cameron Bridge 25 is what, I, what I've got in here at the moment, the old particular. Very tasty. Um, I don't know if you saw up on the chat a little while ago, but my brother is in the chat. Um, he's, not, he's not a big whiskey drinker or at all, but he, he said... Have you tried the honey Jack Daniels and what did you think? Oh my. Yeah, they add the honey no. to it. <laughs> yeah. that's that's right. Right. That is, that's definitely, but that's what that's the kind of stuff he likes. I'm trying to change his ways, bless him. He'll he'll work it. Yeah, that's the one thing. Is uh generally they'll take maybe something, not always, but maybe a whiskey that didn't taste too good on its own. And instead of throwing it down the drain, they'll then add in a vanilla or a honey or a maple and sometimes it's a syrup or an extract or maybe it's actual honey and then it tastes better and uh, so so we usually stay away from the the added flavors not that I know some folks that like to make drinks out of them and stuff and and have at it 
I, I know it helps the individual distilleries because instead of throwing it down the drain, they can they can market it sometimes at a big old whopping profit. So, big old whopping, whopping, a whopping big profit. Now, Bart, I did pour you just a, just so you can kind of go back and forth nice. here, but they're both twenty year olds. Right, they're both uh, fifty one and a half percent ABV. The Blair Athol against the the Glen Goyne. Mm. I just just to see what your thoughts were. Ooh, ooh. I think I need to spend a little more time, but. I enjoy the Glen Goyne immensely. The Blair caught me off guard a little bit. <laughs> well, and when I bought them, the Glen Goyne was my first choice. And I was looking down the list of what Auburn Spirits had because they sent me a text. I was like, oh, I'll try that Blair Athel too. Hmm. Athel. You're I think the and 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 I think the Blair Athel edges the Glen Goyne out. A little bit. I'll They're both to, good, both I'll delicious. To, I'll have to bounce back and forth. I figured the Glen Goyne would be edging out the Blair Athol. I'm a bit hit or miss with Glen Goyne. Um, I mean, I know Roy's not watching, so I'll probably survive the night so I can say it. Um, but Glen Goyne, some of their age statements, fine. Some of them, not so fine. Um, I, you know, This is going to probably hurt a lot of people, but I really don't like the teapot dram. It's, it doesn't suit my palate at all, but a lot of people love it, and that's fine. But the cast strength that they do is incredible. Mm. So I, I have to be really careful. I have to try before I buy, definitely, with those. And um, that's probably the only reason why I haven't picked up something like that yet, because it's a lot of money to drop if you don't like it. Mm. Uh, I was going to ask you real quick, Vin, because you were talking about the show you did with Roy and adding water. You Generally, you don't add water, and you've been against it. I mean, expand on that a little bit. Yeah, I kind of get a bit of um, bit of rap for it, but it's again, it's just probably the wrong way to think about it because I'm not. Um, I don't. I don't tell people off for adding water. I just what I used to say was I've I've never found a whiskey that was improved by adding water because I'm I'm quite happy to drink whiskey all the way up to like seventy percent. You know, I've got some sixty nine percent stuff knocking around here, uh, and I've I found myself never really bothering with it. And then um, he sort of sat with me on a, on a few personal calls and was like, I need to change your ways. You're wrong. <laughs> um, and then we had this, I'll bring it out again, this Strathclyde 25. And I added so much water to it. I had a, a 25 mil pour and I, I must have put in it like three and a half teaspoons into this thing. And then out of nowhere, it was a completely different whiskey. It was like there was a, another whiskey in this bottle that I didn't know was there. And uh, I really did have like a, a mini epiphany moment with it. So now I'm, I'm a little bit more receptive to it because I used to do the little, I've got, um, there you go, I've got like pipettes. This is, it's not, not enough, I don't think. You know, you, you can maybe do a little bit, release some of them tannins or whatever, but to, to really make a difference, you've got to be chucking teaspoons in there, I think. Hmm. Um, something that he said to me was that you, you don't think of it like you're ruining a dram. It's like you're experimenting for your own future. It's a little bit different when I've got like all I've got is this. Sure. If I've only got that, I don't bother. But if I've got a big bottle now, I sit at home. I've got my little notebook that I write in, um, and now I'm just experimenting a little bit. But with my video length, I don't really have the time to go into uh, yeah. like adding water and things like that because I try and stick between five and ten minutes. And if you start doing that, then it's basically two reviews in one, isn't it? So you're you're talking to the long winded man, right? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I get it. How when Scott's got the edit. Yeah, I wouldn't want to edit you guys. If if you decided one day you wanted to go down to ten minutes, don't call me to edit that down because that's that's well, more than my time's worth. He, he, he get, you didn't get on me, but I said I, I edited the uh, Make America Beat It Again Championship. Right. I started with fifty-two minutes of video. That was gold, baby. It's third. It's the, and people. Somebody commented about how long the actual one is. It's thirty-six minutes long. I cut sixteen minutes out, and I told Bart, "It's us smacking our lips." Well, that pausing, rid of. rubbing our head, contemplating. I love the contemplation. You can see volumes on crackers. my face. <laughs> Watching me eat a cracker is damn near magical. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there was out of fifty-two minutes, there were sixteen minutes of just 
you see Lip me smacking, the, swallowing. You see me eat a head cracker, scratching. It's damn near award worthy. I can <laughs> I can really work on a cracker. I don't think I don't think I cut out any comments. I think all the comments are in there. It's just the pauses. Well, that the was contemplation. A long the, it was the, yeah. the finale was long because everything in front of us was phenomenal. Uh, Tom R says to release the full uncut version for our Patreon folks. We'd love to watch. I, you, Tom, you're, I mean, I think I deleted it. Matter of fact, because <laughs> it was taken. It was like ten gigabytes of space. It was taken. I'll have to. We could do that. That's not about. But you're reason. not. I'm just telling you, you're not missing out. You're, all you're missing out on is the the ASMR audio mm -hmm. sensory noise. That's not a bad stuff. idea for the Patreon folk. I mean, Nobody little, wants to watch. Tom's the only one that wants to watch it. I can really do a lot with a cracker in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the horsed version of a cracker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's it's art worthy. I yeah. mean, it's and and for the Patreon supporters, they may enjoy. So, yeah, and have guys, you know, there is a market for everything. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, just to go back to the beginning, for those that weren't here at the beginning, we talked about right about the one hour mark. We're going to shut this one down. Roy Aqua Vitae is going to go live from uh, Fajil. 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 Uh, he's got permission to go live from the Isla House. So we're going to, as uh, soon as we're done, everybody go over to Aqua Vitae's yeah. channel and tune into his live stream you're, from you're, there. You'll be at a house in Isla. I'm, I'm, I'm so jealous of this trip up there. I really do need to get myself out there because it's it's somewhere that I would have avoided a couple of years ago, but now I feel like I could go to every distillery and find something I like in on Isla now. So soon, soon I'm going to go. Soon. Maybe I'll do a vlog. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, Whiskey Throttle's just now tuning in. He's missed out on a lot. Yeah. The, the whole mouthing of crackers. Where you at? Where you? Where you at on back and forth between right. the glue and the blur? Adding a little water, I can see what you were saying. It's I would need to probably sit down mm -hmm. and spend an hour. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. With they're pretty similar, though. Really, they are pretty close. There's this beautiful underlying sweetness of the of the uh, Blair. Yes, there is. Yeah, and that's the part that started to really open up. Yeah. Where I could uh, kind of see what you were saying, I could I could see how it could definitely win me over. At first, it was almost overpowering, and uh, the touch of water I thought really opened up the sweetness to it. And I finished it quickly. I stayed with it, so um, very nice. I've just pulled the um, Fetcon twenty. Twenty. I've lost the bowl. Yeah, 20 years old. So this is the first old particular single malt I've actually tried. 51.5%. What a great number. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah, I'm leaning toward the Blair now. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Adding the water changed it up. Like I said, it seemed almost too, too opening explosive at first. And then it just kind of settled in and... And I was definitely leaning toward it. Well, and going back uh, real quick, then talking about adding water and stuff. I've always, I always, anytime I sit down with the whiskey, I always try it neat. Sure. I always try it with a drop of water. Right. And I usually try it with another drop. How many? Two. That's two. But I mean, eh, you know, it, it depends on how strong it is. Well, we believe in playing with your whiskey. Yeah. And we mean that in all aspects. Now, <laughs> the, the other aspect is time. So most, I would, I would say most whiskeys change with evolve. air. Yeah, they'll over evolve time. a little bit. Yes, some not, but a lot do. Most, I would say the majority right. do. So you always, to me, you always want to try them neat. You always want to try them with water, and you want to give them some air. The Glenlivet Nadura Peated mm. was one that uh, changed a lot. Scott had had one of those. He'd been with a, uh, a buddy or an uncle or a cousin or something. And uh, and you let me try that one when it was down to about a third of the bottle, and it was unbelievable. And we couldn't get that here in Kansas, but when I was in, in Texas, I went and bought two, and I opened it up, 
immediately took a sip and was like, oh, this isn't the same thing. And I let it sit for two months and went back and I was like, yep, there it is. There yeah. it is. <laughs> that is it. And that's the one that did really, really well. So this is just an, uh, an Isla cask finishing basically that happens to this, this uh, dram. And uh, as you, as some folks saw in our, our uh, peated shootouts, it holds up quite well. Mm -hmm. I would say that is like an unsung peated hero that some people haven't experienced yet. I mean, it really, really holds up. And I thought it was like a, a marketing gimmick. I was ready to just trounce it. And then I was like, ooh, yeah. and it doesn't nose well. That's one uh, that does not nose well. And then you're like, oh, my, this is good. That That's intriguing with me on that. So. Well, and D.H. Silve, too, is asking, he says, I'm always wondering what people mean by a drop of water. I know some people mean a drop. To me, it's not necessarily a drop. It's it, it's relative to the it's, sample that you have. I mean, it's, it's, a, a, drop. it's a splash. It's, it's one a, drop for me. It's a, I mean, because even with our with our crystal dropper. Yeah, you can do a single drop. You can do a single drop. I'm actually talking, I don't know, it's, it's if you drop. talk drop of water, it's like maybe five. <laughs> for me it's a drop baby <laughs> i'll put one drop in pop drop but yeah. if i'm dealing with a 60 percent, 65 percent abv i'm i may do four drops i'm trying it neat i'm trying it with the, okay. uh, the initial drop i'm trying it with another i'm trying it with i'm t you know until it gets down oh here's my deal see i i want to be able to recreate so if i do a drop and it's still too strong or it didn't dilute enough then I know I can do four drops. If it suddenly opens up and it's beautiful, I might make a note in a little book. And then I know, hey, if I come back to this one, it really mm. opens up with four drops. I don't know. But yeah, that's something I'm trying really hard to do now is find that threshold and remember to remind myself where that is so that I come back to it again later. Because the amount of times I've gone over the edge with water is is uncountable. You've been there, I'm sure. And you're just like, nah, that's... That's bad. I've ruined that whiskey, but you just you finish it anyway. Nobody ever throws it away, do they? Right. Yep. And I've done the same where a single drop sometimes, and I'm like, ooh, it's not as good immediately. So, yeah, especially at 40%. I mean, but I'll take it down below 40% a lot, which professional tasters will do as well, because there are some things you can suss out when you bring that ABV way, way down. Mm. Have you heard about the um, putting putting whiskey on your hands? Someone yeah. told me. This. I'm, I'm not sure how true it is. You know, when you rub it and you get like a sense of the cask, is what they say. But it's it's an interesting idea. I'm not sure I fully subscribe to it. But I don't like to waste the whiskey. Uh, now, if I spill some, yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> but no, I had a I had a, uh, a guy I knew. I was at a convention in Dallas, and he said, uh, "Let me show you something that I learned at a at a VIP tasting thing." And he poured what was the equivalent in my palm of like a nickel or a dime size. And it was very expensive whiskey. And I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. And then he's like, rub your hands together. And then he had us come back three different times. And it kind of knows different all three times. And uh, he's like, just try to get the maltiness and then try to get the wood in the barrel. And it was rather interesting because it, it, it really did kind of show some different nosing. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, going completely off piste about um, differences. Um, I went to a, a, a tasting in London recently where... Uh, Wild Turkey came over, uh, the master master guy there. Um, I, forget, I think it was Eddie Russell. Eddie Russell. Um, he came over and he brought with him six different rare breeds. We had like a 1990, a 1995, a 99, one from the 2000s, and then the, the 15 and the 16 or something like that. And they're all the same, all the same um, mash bill, exactly the same recipe different casts, different points in the warehouse. And I couldn't believe the differences between them. It was incredible. Um, it was, yeah, a really good free event actually as well that the, uh, cause there's a, there's a Facebook group called the British bourbon society. Um, absolute legends in the UK for pushing bourbon around in, uh, and making sure that everyone's getting on board with bourbon. And I'm really glad that I've got to go to that. It's all free as well, which is amazing. Wow. That is amazing. Well, and Phil Dwyer's in here. He just met Eddie Russell as well, and he he says Eddie Russell the king. Wow. So, yeah. yeah, I saw Phil on, uh, I think, Instagram or Twitter. He was tweeting out, Instagramming out when he was at that tasting. Yeah, he met him in Manchester. I think they did a slightly different one where they had 
they got to try a, like the Masters Keep 17 or something, whereas we have the rare breeds going through. Yeah, so I mean, both tastings were amazing. Um, I'm glad I went to the one I did, but I could have gone quite easily gone to the Manchester one because, as you said earlier, I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty much equidistant actually between London and Manchester. Wow. Mm. What are we now, Bill? Malted man cave, old Keith over there. Ooh, Thanks, Keith. Keith. He says, "What's up, all? Can we catch a glimpse of Bart's long legs for days? I think those just a little skin, Ooh. or do I have to super chat a little bit more? Look at that." More, I vote $10. more. Ten dollars is all we need, Keith. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think I showed a little bit of his leg earlier, and I was like, "Whoa, hold on, no, that's, that's a freebie." Yeah, it was like a white screen was on display. <laughs> you know, since since Keith yeah. likes being teased, though, team let's, let's tease October. Oh, you're teasing in a different way. October's neat. This may be the first time we've gone into any depth. Yes. Do you want to say more? Uh, October of this year will be our fifth anniversary. Fifth, fifth year. Anniversary. We started October of 2013. Right. October 18th, 18th. And we said, how about if we do a scotch gathering? A little gathering. In a Wichita. small, intimate little gathering for anybody we, that wants to travel. We don't know what interest would be. There in might it. be five people. We are looking at a official like a steak dinner and tasting on the friday night we literally have a restaurant called scotch and sirloin yep how can you not go there and then saturday will be a hangout right. and a cooked meal at nighttime with uh we just contacted a liquor distributor mm -hmm. uh close by he's more than willing to bring in several booths and for tastings we're gonna do one or more little live shows while we're there yes so we'll be we'll be living in for those that can't make it. Just a little teaser. That's yeah. more to roughly, come. Yeah, more to come. We're still hashing some stuff right. out. We want to gauge interest kind of and see how many people would be interested sure. in coming to we'll, Wichita. We will Kansas. have to charge a little bit for some of these events because oh, there yeah. is a cost associated. Yeah. So well, we would be looking at tickets for the Friday night, the meal right. and the tasting. The meal and the tasting. Um, Saturday would be part of the day would be free if you want to come meet us and hang out. Um, and then the the meal at the nighttime and the continued right. hangout would be yeah. another ticket. We've so, got to work that out. But it's going to be like light, fluffy, and fun. A we're Scotch looking at, gathering. It will be our anniversary is October eighteenth, mm -hmm. and it's actually the nineteenth is a Friday and, and the twentieth is a Saturday. So if, if you're so able to travel, weekend. yeah, if you're looking, I mean, make make a put a little mark on the calendar now if you're looking to travel. Just block out October. That's what you need to do. There block you. it out. Get get yourself to the US, mid US. Ah, oh, right. that's, that's the first I've heard of it as well. Obviously, and that sounds amazing. I would love it if I could make that, but I already know that I can't. I know, and if it's if it works out well, it may be an annual thing that we do because the idea of doing a live show with fans able to all show up and be present, mm -hmm. and we're even talking to um, a few folks, we may even be able to pull on pull on stage live. Uh, Tom R is asking if music by Cousin Shane at nighttime that uh, it is the possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I talked to Shakes he will. Pennington. He'll be there. Yeah, I talked to Shakes Pennington, the guitarist too, and he's like, "Yeah, that's that's." They think they might be able to work something out. Well, and I actually talked to Dave, the one of the band guys as well. I said it's Ooh. a smaller venue. Ooh. You couldn't have. We wouldn't have the volume and all the big stage set. But he said he'd be, still be interested in looking and see if we can oh. get the band down there wow. and play. See, I would think the band would be too loud. There, there's some loud guy. I was thinking, you know, just Shane and the guitarist. That could be too. Yeah. There you go. Ooh, yeah, like, like a MTV unplugged. Right. Uh, Santa Cruz in 1999. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate right. it. He says, break out the bottle of Wow. Oh, Ooh. for 20 bucks. Sure. There's one. You want me right. to show leg? That's right down there. Where is that? Oh, yeah. The one behind it. That's a small batch. Oh, sorry. There's barrel Why proof. Why did I go right to the... Uh, I don't know. Why did I go right to the small batch? Right. I've decided I'm going to do the scallywag and the car strength next to each other. Mm. Mm. Not a lot. I save myself half. Just a hair. We're coming up on three. It's three fifty here again. Just before the hour mark, we're going to close this one down. Roy is going to go live from uh, Fajil. Yes. Uh, from the house of the Isla house. Mm. 
the house that Isla built. That's what I'm going to call it. So what time? Yeah, we're getting close. Ten minutes. Well, then uh, take us to your channel. Of course, those that are tuning in on YouTube, you're known as no, or your channel is No Nonsense Whiskey. No. How did tell us about how you got started? What brought you in? Uh, how you got into whiskey? You know, it's really funny. I had to answer this question for the first time uh, in nearly two years. Someone got on my on my comments and were like, "Are you telling me that you think every other whiskey channel is nonsense?" And I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "No, that I mean that's." <laughs> That really isn't why I started saying no nonsense whiskey. It was just a snappy name that I thought up, but it was more about cutting down the nonsense in the industry rather than what was on um, on like on YouTube. So like you know you buy these boxes and they're like this is the best malt in the world. This is the best malt in the world. It's like well is it? One of them's got to be the best malt and the other one isn't. So I want to start telling people what's crap. Like yeah, everyone talks about what they love and what they you know like good old Ralphie. He says he'll never review something he doesn't like. I want to review things I don't like. I want to tell people what I don't like and I want to make sure they don't buy it. Mm. That's what kind of got me into it because I like, I like to buy bottles that are that everyone can afford. Uh, sometimes I like to get expensive stuff and that's really where it all came from. Um, at the time, I think it was me, uh, sorry, it was you, Ralphie, and sort of a handful, like Whiskey Wednesday. There must have been maybe five or six really prevalent people. And I was like, wow, this is, this is something I can get into now before it's too late and obviously now we're, we're we're at a stage where we've got something like i don't know maybe 200 odd english whiskey english speaking channels um of varying sizes so i'm glad i did it when i did because now i'm part of it all and we're all growing together and i love that it's it, it like a lot of people ask me are we in competition and, and it's like no i certainly don't feel that way it's there's a market for everybody some people like you guys they might not like me some people like me, they might not like you guys, whatever. And it's most people like everybody. There's right. a lot, there's a lot of people who don't like us. Well, <laughs> in particular, it's my part that they don't like. They're like, who's that goofy guy wearing dumb hats all the time? He's tall and he talks a lot. In the I'm manga like, shirts. Yeah, and he wears manga. What a bastard. <laughs> well, I always thought it was funny, like when you got like sometimes because I'm on my own every every episode, and sometimes I get somebody else in, but uh, and I, I watch you guys, and I think, man, I wish I had somebody else to bounce off. Maybe I'd be a bit more humorous, whatever. But then I think, oh, yeah, but what if I get someone else in and everybody hates that person? What do I do then? Do, I, do, we, do we have a conversation? Like, wow, you, you need to go. I can't have you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was our start. You know, we've got 23 years of history together. So I said, we've already got uh, uh, a kismet. You know, I mean, we already kind of have our own thing. And so our deal was just to basically open the doors and let people see what happens all the time anyway. He's hanging trash on me, and I'm telling him he's little or something. You know, I mean, and so the, and I used to tell him, if 17 people watch and comment as you and I hang out and sip whiskey, that's a win right there. So yeah. – and and so we were and and then the idea of the journey i think for us from dummies novices as we continue on we're in our own lord of the rings lord is lords of the whiskey mm. no that's too much see i went over too far there see, I, I think like um what i would ask everybody who's watching now if they, if they watch two well three videos tonight obviously roy's straight after this but if you watch two more videos i implore you to go back and watch your guys first ever video and my first video because like everybody's first video is terrible apart from roy's obviously at all he's mr mr clean and mr swish <laughs> but um but like like your your journey was exactly the same as mine so, like we decided to put this camera up we're like these little scared rabbits in front of the, the thing i don't know how much personality do i need to give out but then after a while you just sort of go with it you guys have been doing it for five years now you're basically pros um i'm more and more and more comfortable doing it um these live streams still scare me a little bit, but um, <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> but yeah, I reckon anybody should go watching the live. That, I mean, that's not any different than, than well, sitting there shooting an episode. That was one of our deals. Yeah, we were literally like, you know what? We don't do takes, cuts, reshoots. And we were like, we should put a, something up live because we're basically able to do it live anyway, knowing there might be a few little weird flubs. We're, we love the normal flub. We'll just roll with it. And I think that's why live works pretty well with us. Occasionally, Scott will, like, let out a whole train of obscenities, and we've got our, oh. Well. 
Oh, I got told off for swearing in one of mine um, right early on. I, that's why I don't do it anymore because I just sort of went, oh, I'm going to swear. I swear naturally in my normal speech at work. I work in like a production environment. It's a daily greeting. But um, the, someone told me like, the, the next day, they're like, you can't swear in your videos because I played that in front of my granddaughter and she's like three. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah, I, I get that because I think I thought nobody under 18 would ever watch my videos, but people might put it on in the background just for a bit of background noise or whatever. So I've made the choice now not to swear. And if I do, I'll do a cork pop. Well, uh, I just remembered before before we start to close it out, we still got a few minutes. You were going to do a drawing for our ice. Was Ooh. it the ice cube trays? Yeah, that is true. We need the to square. Run right now. What were they called? We had. The, oh God. Well, the 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 tagline was you had to put ice ice, ice, ice baby. baby, and we got it's these two inch square ice yeah, cube. Forget the name of. Them. We got sixty nine entries. Good. Yeah, they make these big. They're a tray. They're silicone trays. They make four two inch by two inch cubes. That you can drop in. They don't fit in a Glen Karen glass. You got to put them in a big rock. That reminds we still haven't heard from Martin Caravati, who won the two all Irish whiskey Ooh. glasses. Well, we'll give him another. Yeah. Martin's so, Martin, if you're watching or you watch this, right. uh, send us an email at scotchtestdummies at gmail.com. Well, since we're getting ready to wrap because we don't want to step on uh, on Roy, why don't you go ahead and do a uh, Siri well, random number one through sixty nine? Someone pointed out he's got he's got his video posted ready to go, and oh. he's got a count. He, it's he's posted to go at a quarter after, oh. so we got twenty we got a little time. twenty minutes now. But we so can we still carry go. over. Yeah, uh, the sixty nine entries. Uh, if you can call out, ask Siri to do a number between one and sixty nine, I will announce live. The winner of these little this little ice tray thing, she's going to ship them. The gal's going to ship them. Are you? What? I'm not sure I understand. Oh my God! You'd already hit Siri. She yeah, know. you told me to do it, and then well, you kept talking. I, I you said can't ship keep talking. I said ship them like three Gosh. times. See, she's still. See now to she's mad. Hold on. She's interfering Shh. with the show. <laughs> Generate a random number between one and sixty-nine. Do it, Siri. Do it. It's five. Five. Wow! I got to roll way down here. Who's five? Wes Ellis. Wes Ellis is number five. I'll tell you, Eric Schwab was six, just to tease Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's been commenting stuff a lot, too. Uh, oh, yeah. That's why I saw that he name there. Was he in here? I don't know if he was in here. I don't earlier. know. I don't know. But he'll watch and go, ooh, it was so close. But I didn't Wes see, Ellis is I didn't five. see George Kaplan just came in a little bit ago. Wow. A dram dude is in here now. Let me highlight Wes so I know. Winner. Uh, so for those tuning in late, we're going to end this here pretty soon. Switch over to Aqua Vitae's channel. He's going live from Fajil, uh, the Isla House. We teased in October. Look at the weekend of October 19th and 20th. We're going to plan a scotch gathering in Wichita. It's our fifth anniversary. We will probably have some merchandise that you oh, will definitely. get for attending oh. for our fifth anniversary. Sure, something special. Yep. Yeah, we've talked. We don't know. Uh, Friday Friday night will be a meal and a tasting at a Scotch house or a sirloin steak and sirloin house, steak and yep. scotch, scotch and sirloin they house. They have a here. room that fits up to 100 people. So we're going to cap that one at 100. Yeah. Um, Saturday yeah. will be a hangout with us. Maybe we'll have uh, Cousin Shane will be there singing. We're going to have some whiskey booths with some sampling and some whiskey tastings going on. Right. And just hanging out. Then we'll do a live show as well maybe even two live shows just for those that can't travel and uh, we thought that would be kind of fun and then if uh, you know we can pull some people live on camera that want to go live and those that don't can just sit and watch yep all right we haven't talked about our 12 hours of boom is coming up july 7th we are going from 10 a.m to 10 p.m moved it forward for because a lot of our european friends said you know what that's too late we missed most of the show yeah so it'll help out there and then it helps us as well right <laughs> yeah, I, I may be flying out to go to Florida the yeah. next day. So but, starting early is good. Yeah. So Saturday, July 7th, 12 hours of boom. Start 10 a.m., 10 p.m. Central Time. Right. CST, baby. You awesome. ready? I, I loved it when you did it last year. It was absolutely brilliant. That was fun. Yeah, we've got several folks lined up. Brilliant. You said it was brilliant. brilliant. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the best YouTube I've seen, especially that last hour. It was really serene and... Um, I don't know. Just, I mean, I watched it the next day because it was far too late for me, like you said. But um, it was just, yeah, like a really, a really nice roundup of of the whole the whole evening. 
It was fun. Then we drank the Zimas and it turned into a burp fest. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to have Zima again. Oh my god, tradition. I couldn't believe it though. That it thing, tasted oh, pretty know, good. At it the end tasted of the day. good, but all of a sudden though, it was definitely. Blah, I was like, and I'm not a big fan of the belching. Someone else is, but you're. It was yeah. It was a good wrap for the show. Claire is gonna miss out on the twelve hours of boom because he's in a wedding. Well, that's where uh, your priorities are at, I guess. Yeah, Claire, I guess, so you probably love going to those weddings. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, I like the wedding. You like singer. to catch the flowers. And oh stuff. yeah, anytime oh, they ooh, can. Have here come that. the you're flowers. Like, ooh, Let me catch you're up. like a cake aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> we just hammered Claire, man. We just went. That was what happened right there. <laughs> All right. Let's kick it back and tell us more about your show and tell, where they can find you. Yeah, let's go ahead and wrap it up for Roy yeah. and uh, tell everybody, Vin, where to find you at on uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, so so I'm uh, Vin from No Nonsense Whiskey, uh, No Nonsense Whiskey on uh, YouTube, No Nonsense Whiskey on Instagram, NN Whiskey on Twitter. You, you can search No Nonsense Whiskey on Google and you can find me. That's the main reason why I picked the name because it's semi-unique. But yeah, um, check me out if you want. I do like nice and nice and short reviews. So if you if you're thinking Barton's got a bit too long, then then head on over. I'll be more than happy to have you. You bet. You we know. go long. We, <laughs> if we you go want, yard. We if go you yard. Want, if you want a short review, do not tune in. Yeah, you'll us. be like, that was 15 minutes. That is snappy. Look how snappy they were in 15 minutes. You know what was funny <laughs> though? When we going back to the beginning, when we first started, we would set a timer. Or we would have it running. We were we, we were kept it under seven ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were trying to do seven Which on is, the spot. That's actually the ideal YouTube. We had read video. that. I think. Yeah. yeah, we'd read that. And we tried to hold it in, and, and then we just, just stopped. As, we broke it. it. Yeah. We it, even we had couldn't. a timer. I think our intro. Some of our intros takes like six minutes now before we and, even get to. And, the and then people are like, "What are you doing?" We kind of like when Bart rambles, and then Scott drags him back into the, what we're supposed <laughs> to be doing, and then he's like, "What are you doing?" You're like, "You're talking about ducks, ducks. What the hell are ducks?" And yeah, I'd be like, "Oh, okay, yeah." And then we're back, kind of like that little moment right there. You just reminded me. I completely forgot to talk about board games. I oh, bring it up. Bring Thank it up. you. No, nope, it's too no, late. We, he needs we got to go. Thanks no. to everybody that tuned in. No, come on. He's got to love something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next time, maybe. Next time. I'll, I'll yeah, next time. Shoot, yeah, there's a whole we world did. I just there. realized we went a whole hour without oh, any, without a minute. I did a live work. show oh, yesterday. No, just stop. Oh. Just stop. Right there. We did it. We went a whole show without it. My live guest was from England. Like, he was from England. It, zip it. He was an author. Zip. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Combin. Next time we'll gang up on him, Bart, because I, I I do love a board game or two. All right. One, just tell me your favorite. That's it. Oh, uh, favorite quick one would be Love Letter. Oh. Like that. Love, Love Dude, Letter. 16 uh, cards. That's it. It's, it's like it's poker. It's like poker. Anybody can play right now. Yep, boom, or you're in. Yeah, he didn't like love letters. Scott was like, ugh. Oh. It's brilliant. And my favorite big one would be Pandemic. Oh, there that. you go. End of the world. Insane. That's it. That's Scott's mad already. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last time I'm coming on the show then, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I almost got throat punched. To stop, stop already. Quick. All right, hey, let's, let's close it out. Thanks. Right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody tuned in. Thanks for all the super chats. Thanks to Vin. Uh, for joining us over at No Nonsense yes, Whiskey. Yes, the game shout out. Douglas Lang has this wide range of whiskeys from independent bottlings to the blends that they do. Beautiful. Uh, check them out if you haven't. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a bad one in there. The Epicurean doesn't meet my palate, but Bart loves it. Custard. Mm. So um, everybody switch over, go over to Aqua Vitae's channel, mm -hmm. and let's catch up to Rollway live from Fajil. That's right. Thanks for being on the show and enjoying us and scotch it. You Scotch gods. Salonja. Yes. Dummies. Dummies. Cheers. <laughs>